Hello and welcome to day 12 of our sixth grade math review. This is the final night. We will have looked at the entire sixth grade math curriculum using problems from the 2017 start test. And so we are going to go ahead and get started here with number 14 on that 2017 star test and we're looking at data tonight and this is a very strange piece of data this is called either a box plot or sometimes and you can tell why it's called a box and whisker plot and its reason is called a box and whisker plot is simply because you see we've got boxes and these little things off to the side kind of look like whiskers on a cat so that's what we call it a box and whisker plot. So what we have here is actually two box plots on top of each other. Let's make sure we understand what all of these dots and boxes and all that mean before we get into the statements here. So we have the fall musical and we've got the spring musical. So the fall musical has a range. The lowest in the data set is 140 and the highest is let's call that 225. So the range, and that's why we have these little dots on the two sides, that's the highest and the lowest. So the range is going to be 225 all the way down to 140. So we're going to call that 85. Now this middle dot inside the box, it doesn't have to be in the middle of the box, but of the box, but it's got this line right here. This is what we call the 50th percentile. So that's the exact middle of this particular data set. We don't even know how many numbers are in this range for the fall musical. Could be 10, could be a thousand. But it's this, let me see if I can make that a little bit clear. There we go. It's this right here is the 50, so that's the midpoint, 50th percentile. So we're gonna call that 165. So 50th percentile is, we call that 165. And then the other two, you see this box right here and this box dot right here, that's the 25th and the 75th. So what they do is they take this data set, you have your lowest number, your highest number, the box ranges from 25 to 50, uh, excuse me, 25 up to 75, and then you've got 50 marked in the middle. So that's is now telling you quite a bit of information about this fall musical. So the 50th percentile is 165. So we are going to call, let's see if I can get a little bit more room here. There we go, we'll just eat into that. So the 50th percentile, so the 25th percentile is going to be, oh, that 155 right there. And then the 75th, is percentile that is going to be oh, 200 right on the dot now this has got a very that looks like 206 let's make it 200 this has a very unique uh, title right here from the 25th to the 75th it's called the interquartile range but typically it is just called the iqr and it's just a term to describe this data set. So I'm going to shade it in right here with blue. This is the interquartile range from the one side of the box to the other side of the box, We're running from the 25th percentile to the 75th percentile. So uh, that is about all the information we get from the box and whisker plot. But as you can see, it's letting you know where we are for these. So let's look at the spring real quick. Our lowest is 120. This right here is the 20th, 5th percentile. So I'm going to put a 25th. And we can tell that's 135. Remember, this is our 50th. 50th means it's right in the middle. Half is below, half is above. And this, look at this 195 right here. That's the 75th percentile. So it's got a much larger interquartile range than the one below it. And then you've got your... Uh, your highest is that 200. So if I were to shade in the interquartile range here on the spring musical, that is going to have a much uh, bigger difference. That simply means this data set is a little broader and its numbers are scattered out, whereas it's a little bit tighter, at least 
in the interquartile range in the fall musical. So now that we have all that information, let's get to the question. Which statement best describes the data represented in the box plot? So three are going to be false, one is going to be true. So the range in attendance for the fall musical, which we already calculated, is 85, which, yes, that looks like that is going to be the range from 140 to 225. So I'm thinking F is it, but let's just double check the rest. The interquartile range, remember that's the IQR, that's from the 25th to the 75th, for the spring musical is 45. Well, let's see, the spring musical is 135 here. So I'm going to say it's 135 because that is the 25th percentile. And the 75th is 195. So from 135 to 195, nope, that's 60 as an interquartile range. So that is not going to work. Actually, this 45, you see where this is? That's actually for the fall. So they just gave you the right number, wrong data set. So that's a no. For half the evenings at the fall musical, that means below or less than the 50th percentile, the attendance was less than 160. So really close. This fall right here, and let me change this to red. You see where this 50th percentile is? That Everything below that is the 50th percentile. That's less than half. But you see how this number lands right at 165? And this says 160. So it's close. If this said 165, we would have been good, but it doesn't. And then finally, we've got for half the evenings in the spring musical, so once again, we're looking at the 50th percentile, that's at 160. The attendance was between 155 and 200. Close. 200 is a good upper range, but this 50th percentile is at 160, not at 155. So if you would have made this 160, we would have been good. So our answer is going to be F, but there's a lot more they could have asked you on this uh, box and whisker plot or box plot problem. So that's probably going to be the hardest one for this evening. The second one, we are going back to a stem and leaf plot. We've been doing stem and leaf plots since third grade. Hopefully we understand how this works, but let's just make sure we understand that the stems we're using place value. So think of this as the tens place and think of this as the ones place. Because this key one vertical line two means 12. So if I were to list out this first row right here, I would have a 12, that's the first one. I'd have 15, 15, 15. I've got three 15s because I've got three fives. And then I've got an 18. And then you can do that all the way down. So your range is going to be from 12 all the way up to 49, if we wanted to find the range. Let's see which statement we need, though. The number of students who sold between 10 and 20 is greater than, hold on, let's figure out between 10 and 20. So between 10 and 20, so I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so that is 5. This row right here starts at 22. That's already too big. So I've got 5 is greater than the number of students who sold more than 40. So I've got 40, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 5 is not greater than 6. That is incorrect. The number of students who sold more than 30. Now, it says more than 30, not more than or equal to 30. More than 30, which get, means, guess what? We are not going to include these two 30s. I'm going to say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So more than 30 is greater than the number of students who sold fewer than 30. Once again, not going to include those 30. So let's just go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Definitely not. And uh, we've got H, the most common number. So now we're just looking for our mode. And that's usually the easiest one to find. It's either going to be 30 or 15, because those are the two options for H and J. Let me switch over to blue. So your mode, your most common number is 30. How many 30s do we have? We've got one, two. 
how many 15s do we have? I've got one, two, three. Well, there we go. There are quite a few numbers that have two, 30, 31, 22, 48, 49. There's only one number that shows up three times, and that is the number 15. So your answer is J. So that was a little bit easier than the previous one. And the final one for this evening, and the final one for our total uh, review for sixth grade math is personal financial literacy. Mr. Lloyd wants to buy a new TV, but he does not have enough money in his bank account to pay for one. Which one of these is not an option? Which means three of these are going to be an option. How do you pay for something if you don't have the money in your bank account? He can use his credit card to buy the television now. He can. Remember, credit card is you pay now and then you pay back later, but you are going to be charged interest. So unless you pay it off, by the end of the very first month, the amount of money you pay back is actually going to be more than you paid, which most people, they don't mind because they want it now. That's how the credit cards make their money, is they hope you don't pay it off immediately. He can save money and pay cash for the television at a later date. Yes, he can. As long as he has enough cash, they will always take cash. That's assuming he can wait that long. He can use his debit card to buy the television now. That is not going to work. Because a debit card is tied to a checking account. So a debit card is equal to, I'm going to switch over to green so we can see it. Debit card is equal to cash. You have to have the money. And if for some reason you only have $10 in your checking account and you try to buy something for $100 with a debit card, it's not going to go through. So a debit card sometimes gets confused with a credit card because they are both going to say Visa, they're both going to say MasterCard. That just means that they are accepted by the store that accepts those cards. But you have to know whether you have a debit card or a credit card. And a debit card, you must have that amount of money in your checking account. So that's not going to work. And then finally, he can save money and then use his debit card later. Yes, if he's got money in his bank account, he can definitely use that debit card. That is going to work. So our answer to this final problem is going to be H. That is the one that does not work. You cannot use a debit card if you don't have the money. So that is it for this evening. That is it for our sixth grade review. So thank you for